Let's look at some of the mathematical tools needed to deal with quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is based heavily on operator algebra, which in turn is based heavily on linear algebra. So to make sense of the mathematical formalism of quantum mechanics, let's review some linear algebra concepts, beginning with vector spaces. A linear vector space V is a set of vectors, psi1, psi2, psi3, and associated scalars a1, a2, a3, and so on. In addition to being a set consisting of a bunch of vectors and a bunch of scalars, a vector space also requires two operations, vector addition and scalar multiplication. Now both of these operations have to follow a certain set of rules, otherwise the set V won't be considered a vector space. For instance, the vector space must be closed under addition. What does this mean? Well, if psi1 and psi2 are vectors that belong to V, then psi1 plus psi2 must also be an element of V. Vector addition must also be commutative, so if I add psi1 and psi2, then that should be the same as adding psi2 and psi1. Vector addition must also be associative, so if I'm adding three or more vectors, I can add them in any group I want. And then we have the zero vector property, which means that for each vector psi sub i, there must be a zero vector zero. And when I add this zero vector to my psi sub i, I must end up with psi sub i. I've put an arrow over the zero to distinguish it from the regular zero number and indicate that it's a vector over here. Finally, for vector addition, we have the inverse property. So each vector psi i must have an additive inverse called negative psi i, such that psi i plus negative psi i equals zero. For scalar multiplication, we've got four more properties. The first one is that the vector field must be closed under scalar multiplication. So if psi1 is in V and A1 is a scalar, then A1 times psi1 is also in V. Scalar multiplication must also be distributive over addition. So for instance, a scalar multiplied by the sum of two vectors is equivalent to the scalar multiplied by one vector plus the scalar multiplied by the other vector. Additionally, a vector multiplied by the sum of two scalars is a vector times one scalar plus the vector times the other scalar. Scalar multiplication must also be associative. So if I'm multiplying two or more scalars by a vector, I can multiply all the scalars together and then multiply the vector or I can multiply the scalar separately. And finally, we have the identity and zero scalar properties. So for every psi in the set V, there must be a unitary scalar I and a zero scalar zero, such that i times psi equals psi times i, which is psi, and zero times psi equals psi times zero, which is the zero vector. If every single one of these properties is satisfied and the operations obey all of these conditions that I mentioned, then and only then can the set V be considered a linear vector space. Now that does it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be looking at what is probably the most important vector space in quantum mechanics, and that's the Hilbert space.